Thanks, Charnel, for hosting the first segment of the virtual Yorkville Exotic Car Show. That was an amazing lineup of cars. So we spoke about exotics. How about American cars? Who likes muscle cars? Displacement and big engines, anybody? American cars have always been popular with the Yorkville Exotic Car Show crowd. Arguably one of the best American sports cars is the Corvette. The Chevrolet Corvette name is a name most have heard before. Love them or hate them, Corvettes have always been fast, sleek, and sporty. Now we're going to take you behind the scenes for a roundtable session with the people who helped create and design the all-new Chevrolet C8. You'll hear from Ron Fellows, former Corvette racing driver. You'll also hear from Taj Jukter, Corvette chief engineer. We got as well Kirk Bennion, a Corvette exterior design manager, and Harlan Charles, Corvette product manager. Yes, we're here to uh, talk a little bit about uh, C8, and we have with us uh, Ted Jukter, Corvette Chief Engineer, uh, Kirk Benyon, uh, Corvette Exterior Design Engineer, Harlan Charles, Corvette Product Manager. Well, hi, guys. Hey, Ron. Uh, welcome to the great virtual world. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. It's yes. great to see you. Nice to be seen. Since Daytona, I think. <laughs> yes, that's the last uh, the last race I've been to. Yeah, which is which is unfortunate. One question I have: Why was now the right time to bring out a, a mid engine Corvette? <laughs> There's no time like the present. Um, of course, Harlan and I have been working on this for quite some time now. Uh, really, since uh, 2005, maybe even a little earlier. We first started talking about it, and. <laughs> We realized uh, with the horsepower wars that uh, we're becoming more and more traction limited. 50-50 uh, weight distribution is great for handling balance, but when you start to have uh, these massively powerful cars, um, and that was really happening across a lot of different segments, the challenge wasn't so much creating more power, but how do you get the power to the ground? And so we saw this challenge coming uh, from way back and uh, started talking about, you know, what's the best way to, to meet that. You can do some things to try to put move, more weight on the rear, but ultimately if the engine's in the front, we already had the transmission in the back. So, uh, but if the engine's in the front, um, there's just so much you can do. So the, the big step had to be made uh, in one fell swoop. And uh, it was a long process, honestly, uh, to get everybody on board uh, to believe that we could do a great Corvette and uh, have it mid-engine. And I think Harlan really did a ton of work explaining how we were gonna take what was great about C5, C6, C7, uh, and then add to it, not instead of those great attributes, take all those attributes and add all the merits of uh, the rear engine and the weight bias that exotic cars uh, had. So it wasn't enough to just go full on into the exotic space, but how do we make you know, the balanced Corvette that we all know and love, how do we do that and get the benefit of putting the engine in the back? And that was, uh, it, it wasn't a day decision. It was a, a very long process working up towards getting uh, agreement from everybody to do it. Awesome. Yeah, I think the, the key, like Taz was saying, was this was a new type of sports car that I feel that only, we're the only ones in the world that could do by combining the things that people love about Corvettes over history you know, that the, the V8 power and how easy they are to drive and you can be your daily driver and enough storage space to take on a trip, but add that to the exotic mid-engine attributes. And through great packaging and design, uh, we're able to do that and keep things like the removable roof panel. Uh, now we have a retractable hardtop convertible, two trunks, uh, great uh, visibility, great seating position, very comfortable to drive long distances and have that exotic mid-engine design that Kirk put together. We've always, we've had the desire for a while to to make this proportional change. You know, we've we've had some experiments through the years to 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 look at different things, but um, you know, this this has been a game changer for us. It, it's truly a, a new evolution of Corvette and more so a revolution with this mid-engine layout, and it's it's made for a very compelling design for sure. And I have to give design credit because there's probably every single designer in the building spent their youth designing cars like this. You know, if you're going to design a really cool looking car, this is what you draw. 
And so everybody has these um, sort of unconstrained designs, you know, really wild exotic things. But, you know, Harlan talked about the packaging. We also had the functional elements to it. We want to make sure it was easy to get it in and out of. Um, we had to cool it somehow. You know, it's very different. It would have been much easier if we just said, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll skip the front trunk. Uh, we'll skip the rear trunk. Let's just put more cooling. So, but we wanted it all. And so figuring out that combination of package and functionality and then being able to wrap it with a beautiful skin that's also functional because it has to do all the arrow work um a very very challenging uh and you know kudos to design for uh being able to wrap all that functional hardware in a functional way and then have the visceral response that you get if you drive these cars around people just stop in their tracks it's amazing to see the the reaction to it now, they're a rock star drive for sure and i would tell you though we we started early on uh, arrow testing the this proportion uh you know, in, in rolling road, wind tunnel and such that um, we wanted to get a head start on the aero package, but we also engaged PME early on as well to where we would meet with them on a weekly basis. Uh, things that they would learn more that were probably more race car driven, we could still dissect and apply to, to this as a street car. And PME for people who may not know, that's Pratt & Miller Engineering. Uh, right. Ron is obviously quite familiar with, uh, but there are partners on the race side that do a lot of the engineering and uh, campaigning of the race car. And as new as the design is, and a big change as it was, I hear so many Corvette enthusiasts saying, you know, you it captures the Corvette character in a mid-engine design. It still has the Corvette cues and, and theme that you know right away. It is a Corvette. It's not, it could be nothing else. Far and away, far and away, the best daily driver. Um, yeah, my wife Linda has driven it, and the first thing she noticed was forward visibility, and and also the the feel in your, uh, the steering feel was was so much more responsive. Yeah, I couldn't get her out of the left seat after that. <laughs> I need to uh, I need to know your favorite thing about the C8. Chad, we'll start with you. For me, the C8, and we've talked about it, the favorite thing about it is the way it drives, the way it responds, the combination of ride and handling. There's no other car in the world uh, to me that's like it. And uh, it, it's got all this performance, and it, yet it asks less of you than any other Corvette we've ever made. It uh, feels compliant and quiet and comfortable. When you want to go fast, it wakes up and, and roars. It's just... It does um, that whole driving experience soup to nuts and every kind of driving is to me is that's the, my favorite thing about the car. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, all Corvettes are beautiful, obviously, throughout time. That's kind of the great thing about them. Jen, the new car, um, you know, obviously driving it, like Tad said, all that stuff. But I mentioned before, I love the, the shape of the windshield and the view out the windshield, both interior and exterior. and um of driving the uh convertible with the retractable hardtop and how that looks both top up and top down and plus the flexibility it has to go traveling doesn't take away any trunk room it makes it a great car for what you really want to use a corvette for on the road as far as touring and having fun in and fun to drive and convertible time and then uh Finally, I'll counteract what uh, Tad said and said my favorite thing to see it is that paddle shift, how fast it can shift. I also drove manuals my whole life, and I'll and after years and years of driving it, I'll never get as good as that just flicking that paddle and how quick that car shifts and, and how much fun it is. I Maybe I'm an outlier. I drive manual mode even on the street almost 100% of the time, and I just feel like I'm always in control of the car and really enjoy it. You can tell we love patting ourselves on the back. You ask us what our favorite thing is. We give you like 10. <laughs> it's, it's hard to pick one. It is. It's really hard to pick. We could go on and on about our favorite things. For for C8, uh, for my favorite would be the exterior sculpture of the car. I would tell you when we get around customers of that, uh, I think people are just in awe of the of the new lines of that car. It's not, the you know, the body exterior isn't any like anything we've done before, but it's so unique, it's so compelling. Uh, it's great to see people, how, how they respond to it. And you know, like
points. Uh, my favorite detail of the exterior would be the hidden door handles. You know, not having a typical standard door handle on the body side, you know, in a, or in the front or the rear. And that just having a small, slim membrane package in there is highly efficient. Uh, it's very attractive for the car. I mean, we want the car to look like pure sculpture and, and getting rid of some of those redundant details like that, I think really let the beauty of the car shine through. As long as Kirk and I have been working together, we've been trying to get to a hidden door handle. Finally did it. Let's see eight. <laughs> I'm, more, I'm all about the driving part. Uh, C8, for me, it's the, the driving position. I absolutely love it. Uh, the exterior styling, gorgeous. Um, but, but I'll say the I have never been a fan of convertibles till now. The convertible is just absolutely stunning, with the, especially with the top down. I, you hear that a lot lately. Yeah, there's a lot of people on the team who never would have bought a convertible, but now they're converted. It's like Harlan said, it's beautiful top up, top down. It's got the security. It doesn't take luggage room when you put it down. And the way the top goes up and down in 16 yeah. seconds while you're moving up to 30 miles an hour, I tell people it, it's like you're arriving from the future when you show up there and the car transforms itself either open or closed. These giant panels swinging in the air. It's it's really magic. When I had some neighbors stop by, I had a convertible in, the, in my driveway at that, and uh, they were looking at it like it was the new coupe. And then they thought, oh, wow, this is a, this is really a handsome car. I really like this car. Yeah, it's a neat coupe in that. And I got in the car and I just operated, put the top down. They were just floored. They jumped back. <laughs> they couldn't believe the mechanism. It was a total surprise to them. <laughs> It's fun to do with the remote. You can put the top down with the remote. Yeah. I, I've caught people, you know, from a law and the remote works really far away. So if you see people admiring the car, you know, in a parking lot somewhere, it's really fun to just surprise them with the top going down by itself. Oh, yeah. I've done it where you start it and it scares them. Right. <laughs> start, I've done that. You put the top start. down, you wait, <laughs> and you start it. <laughs> Ron, what were you most surprised about the first time you drove the new eighth generation mid-engine Corvette? Most surprised about. Um, I think the first thing that struck me was uh, the quality of the driving position and uh, forward visibility. Um, and then when I got on when I got on track, is uh, the uh, that that's where you want to take it. Um, the uh, yeah the the. Dual clutch transmission was super impressive, and then uh, again, the, just the the overall balance, um, so much stability, and and then and forward traction, uh, incredible. Um, that, yeah, that's again. I want more time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know how it is for you guys, but it's it, I was being home, basically being home since uh, middle of March. It mm -hmm. had been 33 years since I've gone this long without travel. Going to a go race or something. Yeah, it's just. Oh, yeah. Us too, right? I was just going to say the one thing we did miss out on, you're right about the traveling, was all the enthusiast events we go to. Yeah. And, like, for example, Kirk and I always go to, um, we, I, I, unfortunately, I still call it most part, but Canadian Motorsports uh, Park. Um, there and it's really the closest race for us to go to uh and we really enjoy the fans there in canada people there from upstate new york a lot of people from all over canada come as it's kind of the the only race that the corvette uh races in canada the official race team and it's a great track to be be at and we miss talking to all the enthusiasts that we see and then also the museum events Carlisle events, things like that. We've been doing um, Zoom and, and uh, Microsoft Teams type meetings, you know, where we do our presentations with the customers, but we do miss seeing everybody and going to the races as well. And so it is this tough. Year, since, since customers are actually getting their C8s, you know, we've built over 10,000 of them. And so missing the opportunity in the inaugural year to get people's first impressions, you know, right. fresh 
with their new car. You know, we've been looking forward to that for 15 years. And then, of course, we have COVID and we're going to have to wait till next year. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Uh, any last words for uh, Corvette fans here in Canada? We'll start with uh, we'll start with Kirk. Well, I tell you, it's a great time to be to be getting these cars uh, for for the Canadian buyers here. And then I go with Harlan. I, you know, the Canadian Motorsport uh, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park is is kind of my home track as well. I grew up about two hours from there, and uh, so we always enjoy going there as well as seeing all of all of you folks at the Watkins Glen event as well. Those those are two huge track events we enjoy t attending. Uh, Arlen? We miss seeing all our friends up in Canada. We have some of our best friends and Corvette enthusiasts in Canada we see uh, every year. And so I just wish you all the best. Well, Ron, it's great to see you. Um, it's always great to see you at all the events. Uh, we love getting out to see all of our fans. Honestly, uh, I wish we had more time and uh, more opportunities to visit with everybody in Canada. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you to Chevrolet Canada for this unique opportunity. To learn more about the mid-engined Corvette C8, visit chevrolet.ca. Now let's take a look at a different Corvette. This one is owned by Andy, a longtime supporter of the show. He is such an enthusiastic participant that he has woken up at the crack of dawn to join us for publicity events to promote the show. This is the 2019 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray Z51. It is one hell of a car. It has a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8 producing 460 horsepower and 460 foot-pounds of torque. Front engine, rear wheel drive. Before we get into the details of this impressive sports car owned by a longtime supporter of the Yorkville Exotic Car Show, let's talk about the styling. So this car features the classic Corvette look it has a blacked out kind of look with the window tint, paint, rims, all that kind of stuff. It has a great road presence, it's really menacing, it looks awesome. And it's quick too, zero to 60, 3.7 seconds. I would say traditionally Corvettes have always been quick. Uh, this one is no exception. So the Z51 package comes with a couple of different things. As you can see, you get the better rotors brakes. So they are Brembo brakes. You get better cooling. So the, the car has air channels that directs air to the brakes directs air to the transmission. You get a rear differential cooler, uh, an e-differential for putting the power down better, and a performance exhaust. The Z51 package shows Chevrolet Corvette's attention to making a car that handles really well on the track. Handling and lap times are a priority in this Corvette. Just to give you an idea of this car's on-track and off-track performance, the Chevrolet Corvette Z51 features a dry sump engine oil system. Have you heard of one before? So the benefits of this sort of dry sump system is that there's zero risk of you ever starving your engine of oil completely, right? The old system or wet sump engine, more of a risk in that way. So this car, I would argue, is much better for on-track performance. The speeds that you would be doing to pull all the oil onto one side would only occur on a track. On normal road use, it's, it's not that much of a factor. But it's a nice engine, I will say that. So 2019 Corvette, great on the track, great off the track. I think this Corvette and others like it uh, specialize in a sort of duality where it gives you all of the fun of being on the track, but none of the downsides. So to recap, 6.2 liter engine, sleek looks, great styling, great handling. It's a Corvette. So comparing this car to something like an Audi R8 or a Porsche 911, I think you get the same amount of theater, you get the same amount of performance and handling out of this vehicle. I would say that the Audi and the Porsche are considerably more expensive. I would argue this car is great value and excellent bang for your buck. I also wanted to thank Andy for letting us use his beautiful baby. And um, this is a great car. Andy, thanks so much. That was actually my first video shoot with the Yorkville Exotic Car Show. And it was such a warm introduction and welcome into the community that has been built. Next up is a submission from an individual named Bobby. Bobby and his car club, the GTA Motorheads, are so enthusiastic about the show. At the time this is being filmed, he is our top fundraiser, and with the help of his car club and community, after our show, we'll be announcing which of the cars has the most donations. The top fundraiser will win a prize pack for their patio, valued at over $2,000, from the Melanoma Network of Canada. To check out our leaderboard right now, visit yecs.crowdchange.ca.
2007 C606. Uh, I have owned it since 2011. Uh, the uh, modding bug started right after I purchased the car. Um, I decided to uh, powder coat the rims, the original rims, which are in chrome. I powder coated them in black and then it just started snowballing from there. I uh, proceeded with uh, wrapping the whole car in matte black. The car came in piano black originally. Uh, and then it went on and on and on and here we are after eight years. Many, many mods done to the car. I'm the uh, proud uh, founder of the GTA Motorheads Club and this car was the reason behind it that I decided to uh, start my own car club. Uh, we have a lot of like-minded people in my club, a lot of mature people who are into cars like I am. Um, uh, a lot of people have been helping me along the way uh, to do the lot of mods that I've done to the car. Certainly I haven't done it myself. Uh, um, true uh, trials and tribulations, uh, <laughs> to say the least, uh, <laughs> this car has come a long way. Um, the car, as I said, came in piano black, uh, but I had a lot of issues after actually installing the uh, uh, full wide body kit on the car, about a year after I purchased the car. Um, wide body comes with uh, the hood, the fenders, quarter panels, uh, side skirts, the diffuser. Um, I wrapped the car. The car went through about four different wraps, but I had a lot of issues with uh, wide body kit. Uh, I was getting a lot of uh, spider cracks and and so forth. So I decided to just go ahead and uh, part with the wrap and I decided to go ahead and paint the car in this red that you can see right now. Um, we went through a lot of combination of reds. I didn't really want to have it in candy red or uh, black cherry. I wanted something in between. So uh, there was a mixture of, like I said, candy red and black cherry and we came up with this scheme, uh, which we refer to as candy black cherry. Um, in terms of mods, car has been through a lot, um, starting uh, with the interior. Um, I got the full interior done um, by Caravaggio, uh, a gentleman who, uh, whose shop is in Toronto. Uh, I did the seats, center console, uh, steering wheel. Uh, what else? Um, then I started with the engine. I, uh, engine is currently supercharged with meth kit. Uh, engine is an LS7. Uh, uh, motor, seven liter. Um, I um, basically pulled out the engine, honed it, uh, and uh, the car was pushing around 650 horsepower. What happened? <laughs> the car was pushing around 650 horsepower, uh, naturally aspirated, um, uh, built bottom end, uh, all forged internals. Uh, then uh, I went ahead for about two years or so, uh, then decided to supercharge the car. It's, um, I got a Pro Charger uh, supercharger installed in it with an 8 rip cage, uh, sorry, 8 rip uh, tensioner in it. Uh, it's pushing around 12 and a half pounds right now, and um, I have a meth kit and I uh, beefed up the differential, purchased a brand new uh, Tremec TR60 uh, transmission for it. Uh, it's got a short shifter, um, LG GT2 uh, suspensions and sway bars. Uh, those are the ones I can remember at the top of my head. Uh, the rims are uh, three-piece forged Velos rims. I had to order them specifically for the, uh, the wide body. Um, they're 20 by 13 in the back and uh, 19 by 10 and a half in the front. Uh, they've been through about three different uh, color schemes, uh, just like the car. Uh, currently it has the matching uh, color drums with uh, the body uh, and the, uh, the graphite in the center. Um, I went on and purchased a uh, APR carbon fiber wing. 
Uh, this one actually was uh, developed for the C6 Zero Six. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, the car is running Borla S type uh, cat back exhaust, which <laughs> at the moment it has no cats. I got Cook's Long Tube headers. Uh, maybe we, we can take a look at the uh, motor. Um, the uh, the headlights are the headlights also are uh, custom made halos uh, with uh, hand painted uh, bezels. Um, if you want to come closer, I'm going to show you the engine. Some of the some of the stuff I've done to the engine. Like I said, it, like I said, it's a bottom bottom built uh, LS7, 850 cc injectors, uh, fuel railings, uh, D1SC uh, Pro Charger. Mighty Mouse catch can. Um, yeah, the car is running. Uh, I'm, I'm currently at 800 wheel horsepower with about 780 wheel torque. And I'm going to keep it at that level because I want it to be able to drive the car. I mean, anything beyond that, in my opinion, is just too much for a uh, everyday uh, cruising car. Um, Relatively speaking, obviously, so it's just, just this is just a <laughs> summer car, not the all season car. Uh, the under uh, the hood liner um, uh, was airbrushed by a, a dear friend of mine, Corrado. He's done an amazing job. Uh, the scheme is uh, the Punisher. Uh, I'm I call the car Red Devil. <laughs> Used to be called when it was in, uh, finished in matte white. I called it Casper. Uh, then, like I said, he went through uh, a few wraps uh, right now. Her name is Red Devil. Uh, the car is not lowered. It's just that the white body gives it the perception that the car is lowered. Um, also have the custom made, uh, also have the custom made uh, front spitter with the, uh, with the carbon fiber rods. Uh, with the matching uh, canards, it turned out really nice. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Jonathan, did those. Um, I even changed the windshield because it had some stone chipped on it. So essentially everything in the car at some point or the other has been replaced. Literally everything. I even have a custom made carbon fiber hood liner uh, I'm sorry, uh, roof liner in the car, uh, which you don't usually see on a C6 Z06. Uh, love the car. Car runs perfectly. Um, I have no issues with it mechanically. Uh, it has been through a lot, uh, as I said, but uh, very happy with it, with the setup. Um, also, another thing to note, I have the uh, carbon fiber side view mirrors installed. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it and uh, like I said the GTA Motorheads it's a car club that I've been uh, running for the past eight years I'm, I'm so proud of the club and all the guys who are uh, involved in it uh, we do cruises we do charity runs and uh, that's what gets me going it's it's my passion and I'm very happy with it and I hope uh, uh, you folks at York Wheel Exotic find the car interesting and uh, vote for it <laughs> when it comes to American cars and uh, I wish you guys all the best.
Thank you, Bobby, for that amazing submission. We wanted to take another moment now to share some information on melanoma cancer, as our show is in support of the Melanoma Network of Canada. Sunlight consists of two types of harmful UV rays. But did you know that while windshields typically block UVB, the rays that burn the surface layer of skin, studies show that they do not block UVA rays, which go deep into the skin and cause aging and wrinkling. Additionally, a car's UV protection is rarely dependent on cost or tint. Side and rear windows let in both, which play a key role in the development of skin cancer. Studies show left arm skin cancer is more common in North America, where the driver's left arm is exposed to the sun more often, either by hanging it out the window or resting it nearby. It's important to protect your skin with SPF 50 plus sunscreen or wearing UV protective clothing. It can save your life. If you want to live dangerously, don't skip sunscreen. Drive a sporty car instead. So you've seen the Stingray, a pure Corvette. Now what happens when you turn up the heat? Steve is a proud owner of the Corvette ZR1. You will see soon what happens when you take an already great 6.2 liter engine and strap a big supercharger to it. How's it going guys? Sean here, we are on location at lovely Collingwood, Ontario. I'm here to film this beautiful Corvette ZR1 provided by our friend Steve. He is a first time member of the Melanoma Network of Canada, YECS, Yorkville Exotic Auto Show. Let's jump into it. So we are here with the 2019 Corvette ZR1. This is the big boy, 6.2 liter supercharged pushrod V8, producing 755 horsepower, 715 foot pounds of torque, Top speed on this guy is 340 kilometers an hour, around 212 miles an hour, and it'll do a standing quarter mile in around 10.8 seconds. So this Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 features the most powerful production engine ever created by Chevrolet. It's nice, it's low in the car, it's got lots of carbon fiber all over it, is available with a full manual gearbox. So the seven speed manual, three pedals, or you can go for the eight speed automatic if you'd like. This Corvette ZR1 exterior is Elkhart Blue. The interior is a Napa leather with Alcantara interior, accented with carbon fiber. This 2019 Corvette ZR1 is equipped with the Targa top. So as you can see here, this piece is all missing. It comes right out as one piece. You can store it in the trunk. You do have the option for a full cabriolet, so the soft top. Um, this is how the car comes. I think that's pretty cool. So another cool thing about this Corvette ZR1 is this. It's called the Halo. So this hood's carbon fiber and they have to make this big hole to, in order to accommodate for the larger supercharger. So this ZR1, when compared to the Z06, which is one trip down, has a 52% larger displacement for the supercharger uh, assembly and the supercharger intercooler. Um, that's a lot more air and it's a lot more power coming out of that engine. In order to make room for it, they needed to set up the hood like this. So the assembly right here wouldn't hit it. In my experience, Chevrolet call them heat exchangers or radiators, radiators, however you call it. This guy has 13 rads or heat exchangers. It is set up for the abuse of driving on the track. So this Corvette ZR1 comes with the carbon ceramic brakes. They are Brembo's. They're great, they stop really well. It also has the Michelin Pilot Super Sport Cup 2s, really sticky tires. In the backs, the Cup 2s are 355 millimeters wide. You also get, with the ZTK pack, you get the high wing, which is nice, aggressive, high spoiler. The cool thing about it is it's manually adjustable, so you can loosen the screws and actually tilt the thing forwards to increase your downforce. It also is a chassis mounted spoiler, so it can take the, I would say, extra wind or force of all of that downforce from the extra tilt. So talking about this Corvette ZR1, it's great with duality. So it's both a track monster, gives you all the performance of the track. It also has some creature comforts like cooled seats, has satellite navigation, has a factory remote start. It has built-in Wi-Fi, right? All those kinds of things really gives it a better presence on the road and really kind of rounds out the car in terms of comfortability. You can wire it up so that the cooled seats come on with the remote starter so that you're not getting into your car when your seat's really, really hot. It's pre-cooled. So another cool thing about this Corvette ZR1 is, well, apart from the target top, obviously, because you have the trunk in the back, but the trunk is smart. So because of this 
big, beautiful rear ring. If you have a lot of stuff in your hands when you're closing your trunk, your Corvette will help you. So if I go to close this guy just like this, and then I just kind of close it, even if I let it drop, it has a soft close function, so the trunk will close itself and latch. Included with the price of the vehicle, you get a weekend at the Ron Fellows Driving Academy. It is in Nevada, so what you can do is you go down there, they'll take you out in one of their Corvette ZR1s, they drive you around, you know, they'll show you how to get the most performance out of your car, and they'll show you how to properly handle all of the power of your car on the track. The new one, which is the 2020, is mid-engine. So if you factor that, this is probably the best front engine rear drive cars, at least I would argue, can get, because in order to make it any better, they had to make it mid-engine. So I wanted to thank Steve again for letting us use this beautiful blue Corvette ZR1. I'd like to thank our sponsor, the Melanoma Network of Canada, and happy Father's Day, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. That was incredible. Another incredible, fun car to shoot. We also wanted to thank Ricky from Lovejoy Productions for putting together a fantastic video. As you saw, 755 horsepower is an extremely impressive factory number. So, going for something extremely amazing out of the box to some assembly required, coming up is something you might not have seen before. This Ford Mustang is a resto mod. If anyone has heard of a company called Singer, you know what I'm talking about. Sort of old cars made new again. Let's take a look. It's, um, it's like a go-kart on steroids when you're driving it. But it's, it's a car that demands your attention. It doesn't have cruise control. It doesn't have power uh, brakes, traction control, none of those additives. So when you're driving it, you really have to pay attention to the car. I'm Mark Edwards, and this is my 1965 Mustang GT350 Hertz car. The car was built to be a street car and to drive, have some fun with, and uh, it's been out on the road since 2019. It's taken about a year of putting the parts together and the ideas of what we wanted to do with the car, and it's taken about three years to kind of put those plans together and get it out on the road. It's a resto mod and it's a tribute car. Resto mod is just some upgrades, make the car a little bit safer and a little bit more performance enhanced, but we wanted to keep it factory looking. The tribute part is that it's not a real GT350 H car. The purists didn't like it too much with the stuff that I did to the car and taking it apart and doing what I did with it. But this is the way I wanted to build it and this is what, what I'm enjoying. Modifications I've done to the car, it's got a 351 dart block. It's stroked to 460 cubic inches. So it acts like a big block. It's 640 horsepower. It's about 618 foot-pounds of torque. It's uh, Jim Inglis Weber Carbs on it. I want it, I want it to be old school, but I wanted some new school stuff, and we get into that with the suspension and stuff with, with the car. It's got a Tremec T56 Magnum six-speed transmission. Suspension on the car is Detroit Speed. We put an aluminum frame in the front. It's got uh, coilover shocks. They're adjustable. The back end is a four-link system. Same thing, coilover shocks. It's adjustable keeps it streetable so that we can drive it on the highway and we drive it on the street and it's it's reasonably easy to drive. The interior of the car we we try to keep you know close to the same as what a factory one is a, a bit. The seats are Mustang style seats but they're a little bit more enhanced a little bit more uh, padding and stuff in them. We did put sound deadening and carpeting inside keep the noise levels down. My wife says that doesn't work and going when, when she's out in the car. The R model window in the back has a gap so that when they did road race, I said that window would, would allow the air pressure out and I'm going and actually give them two or three more miles top end speed. So letting the air out, letting the heat out, my wife says that doesn't work either. It's still hot in the car because it doesn't have air conditioning. 
an old car, but it's got a little bit of get up and go. And it makes a little bit of noise. The Weber carburetor do a lot of popping. It makes, it makes a fair bit of noise, but it is, is exciting to drive. What's it like when you're driving down the road? Like Love it. <laughs> We've talked a lot about enthusiastic participants of the show. Our team was very thrilled to work with the driver of this next car. He had such a great time filming this video that he volunteered his time to help out with some other video shoots. He is a natural on camera. You may see him in more content from the Yorkville Exotic Car Show soon. But here he is now sharing the details on his beautiful Dodge Viper. Hi, my name is Jeff and this is my 1994 Dodge Viper. Possibly the sexiest car ever made, you ask me. I remember when I had this model as a little kid. It was sitting on my bookshelf, this exact car, a black 1994 RT10 Viper. I love that car. The curves on it, down this way, across the hood, everything. I literally fell in love with it. It was just mind-boggling. The side pipes is something I had never seen since an AC Cobra. And at that age, it, it literally blew my mind. I couldn't understand like what it was about it. But now looking at it again, I still love it and I still understand why it's probably that sexiest car ever made. And this is under the hood. We've got a 10 cylinder, eight liter monster, 400 horsepower and 450 foot pounds of torque, fed by dual throttle bodies and air filters up front, going all the way to a manual bulletproof transmission. Some of the cool things about this car are the Lamborghini design cast aluminum block and the fact that the battery is behind the back driver's side rear wheel. Some of the other cool things are the fact that there's no top, there's no windows and there's no exterior door handles. This car has some pretty neat history attached to it. Design cues were taken from the original AC Cobra. That's why there is no roof or windows. It's a roadster in its purest sense. Lee Iacocca and Carol Shelby both had influence on its design, and you'll see a lot of similarities, even down to the interior. It's just a basic flat panel with a couple of gauges, just like the AC Cobra. Even on the outside, you have this beautiful sculpted curvy body in Roadster design, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that it doesn't need or to make it fancy. It doesn't even have anti-lock brakes, obviously no airbags, but nothing it didn't need to keep the weight down and the power to weight ratio through the roof. I remember as a little kid playing racing games. Me and my buddy used to play Gran Turismo when we were kids, probably 13, 14 years old. At that time, this car was the best car you could drive in that game. We'd be racing each other saying, oh, I want to be the Viper. No, 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 I want to. And then fine, let's both be the Viper. Then 30 years forward almost, uh, I called him up, actually just a couple months ago, and I said, Ryan, Come over, you, you gotta see this. He, he came over and, and not knowing what was going on, I opened up the garage door and, and there's this car, but it's under a red, red cover. So he doesn't quite know what it is. And this is my best friend. I've known him since grade one. So it was just, it was an amazing feeling. I pulled off the cover and saw his face, just his jaw dropped, it was amazing. And uh, I got to toss him the keys and just say, go nuts. Now let's talk about driving this beast. Again, it's 400 horsepower, 450 foot-pounds of torque. That doesn't even sound like a lot compared to some of today's cars. But in a small, small-framed car like this, with not very much weight, and it's incredibly wide with huge tires, it makes it go. I'm constantly smiling when I'm driving it. You can't get the smile off my face. I look like a giddy little schoolgirl. First to second is just crazy fast. Second to third is definite need for new trousers, but man is it fun. So I've attended the Yorkville Exotic Car Show before, but I've never actually shown a vehicle. This was supposed to be my first year. But with everything going virtual, COVID and all, I guess this is the way to do it. I'm happy to help support the Melanoma Network of Canada, and I hope to see you next year. Thanks. Jeff, nice job. Thanks for that amazing submission. Our next video features the one and only Jim Kenzie with Motoring TV, formerly with the Toronto Star Wheel section. He is at Legendary Motor Car with something special. Take it away, Jim. Hi, I'm Jim Kenzie with Motoring TV and formerly with the Toronto Star Wheel section. 
We're here at Legendary Motor Car Company with this spectacular car. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, we want to talk about the Melanoma Network of Canada. This is an organization that's fighting cancer on every level. car enthusiast at some point or other has thought I could build a better car than that doesn't matter what he drives because face it any production car has compromises they've got to sell these cars to thousands and thousands of people but if you have unique requirements you want a car that's just for you well most of us never get beyond maybe putting fatter wheels and tires on it maybe some Go faster stripes, that's always a, a very good performance addition. But very few of us actually build our own dream car. Enzo Ferrari did, Colin Chapman did with Lotus, Ferruccio Lamborghini did, Gordon Murray. But most of us just don't go that far. But another name to add to that list, Steve Saline. He was a racer back in his younger days, came third to Jacques Villeneuve, that's the brother, not the, uh, the son, in the, the uh, Formula Atlantic series. So he's a pretty good shoe, but he thought, there's more money to be made outside the car than inside the car. So he came up with the idea of doing what he felt was the perfect Grand Touring automobile, and this is it. This is the Celine S7. The engine is a 7-liter Ford Windsor V8, a little Canadian content there, 6-speed manual gearbox, rear-wheel drive. But the power on that engine, it was only 550 horsepower. Come on, that's barely enough to get out of its own way. Well, 0 to 60 in 3 seconds isn't bad. But for this model, this is a 2005, they decided to throw a couple of Garrett turbochargers on the car. Horsepower is now 750 horsepower. The zero to 60 time isn't that much different because with rear wheel drive, there's only so much rubber you can get down to the road. But the performance of the car is much better throughout the rev range. All carbon fiber body with incredible suspension technology, but only 14 of these cars were ever built. So if you want one, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Let's take a look inside. Okay, let's open up this car and see if we can take a look inside. The biggest difference with this particular generation of the car was how much nicer it was inside. There was some criticism of the early Celines that they were a little bit too, well, maybe functional. This thing is beyond gorgeous. It's got exposed carbon fiber everywhere. It's got leather everywhere. It's got all the modern conveniences you could possibly want. And we're gonna take a closer look at it inside right now. Okay, time for the agility test. I gotta say it's worth it, but it's a tough, it's tight squeeze for you here. But the driving position is perfect. You can actually see the road in front of you once you get past the massive fenders out on the, uh, on either side of the car. It's got all your Mod cons, got your Kenwood radio, six-speed gearbox, all the good stuff. The fit and finish on this car is really quite amazing. There is a backup camera in this car. It's kind of a uh, primitive one by today's standards. But given that there's not much to see out the back, as a matter of fact, I don't even see a rearview mirror in this. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Is there no rearview mirror in this car other than that? I guess not. So that's what the camera is for. Besides, I don't think you have to worry too much about anybody passing yet. All right, let's see if I can get out of this thing now. This might not be fit for family television. Ta-da! So there's the seven liter Windsor V8 engine tucked in there with massive exhaust manifold to try and get all that exhaust gases out. Turbos are buried in there someplace. One thing for sure, I wouldn't want to have to change the spark plugs. But, but the car is absolutely beautiful inside and out. The finish on some of these parts, they'd look good in a furniture showroom. It's 
It's an amazing, amazing car. And one thing I want to point out before we go, Mr. Celine was here at one point, and he even autographed the car. I guess if you're playing close to seven figures for a car that's essentially hand-built, that's the least he can do. Now the only remaining question for me is, Gary, where are the keys? I think it's time for a test drive. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Kenzie. Have you seen how close together the pedals are in this car? There's no way I'm going to let you drive this thing in your boots. That Celine is something else. So American muscle cars, guys. I hope you enjoyed this segment. I know I did. For our next segment at 2 p.m., we will be focusing more on precision driving lap times, handling, engineering. I'll give you a hint, it's a German manufacturer. Can anyone guess? Rear engine cars? The next virtual corral is Porsche.